Okay, so Maya in cloth simulation for clothing. We have a character that is animated. Yeah, we need to put the clothes on there. So, I'm going to start with the pants. The reason I start with the pants is because the pants are underneath everything else. I have a shirt, I have a jacket. The pants are underneath the shirt and the jacket, so everything else is going to sit on top of it. So, I need to simulate the pants first. So, I'm going to hide my pants and my jacket. Um, now, the first problem you'll have if I try to simulate it as is, the pants are going to fall down because they need to be held up at the at the waist. Now, there's different constraints and stuff that you can try, but I find that just skinning the pants and then uh, using that to hold the pants up is a better option. So, uh, to allow me a little bit more detail on my pants, uh, you know what, I'm going to leave them like this, but if you want more detail in the pants, you can always put a smooth note on there and then you'll get more folds and stuff but in the in the interest of uh, speeding the process up I'm going to leave them at this resolution and call it good okay so my pelvis joint I'm going to select each of my knees so just three joints basically I have my pelvis my uh, left and right uh, bind, bind knees and then I'm going to shift select my pants and I'm going to go in my rigging menu set here, go to skin, go in the bind skin options. I'm going to reset it. Always switch this to selected joints. I'm going to leave everything else default except this. I'm going to set max influences to one. This is going to ensure that every vertex on my pants is skinned to a single joint. Okay, so bind skin. So what does this look like? You'll see that now it looks pretty bad. All right, let me hide my joints here so we can see this better. It looks pretty bad, but that that's what we want. Okay, if we look at the uh, weights here, if I go to paint, paint uh, skin weights, you'll see that my pelvis has that influence right there. So let me just reset it here. My pelvis has that influence. My left knee has that. In, uh, my right knee has that influence, and my left knee has that influence. There is no blending between the different zones here. It's all each vertex is 100% on one of those joints okay so that's that's how I want it okay so next thing we can now do now that we've skinned it is we can go back to the FX menu set here and then we can do a go to end cloth and we're going to create end cloth so that's going to turn my pants into a cloth object okay and then as soon as we do that you will notice that uh, down here let me close my rig here we have a nucleus node, which the nucleus node basically defines all the physics for the simulation. So all the gravity and, and wind speed and such and such are held in the nucleus node. The nucleus node has an enable switch here. So if I turn off enable, it's going to completely disable the entire simulation. So every piece of clothing that you make is going to be under this nucleus node unless you, you decide to define a new nucleus node generally i only have the one nucleus node in my scene so this will turn that on and off so i'm going to keep that enabled you also see that i have an end cloth node uh in my scene as well that is defining the cloth characteristics for the pants i'm going to start in my nucleus node <clears throat> uh, i'm going to go down scroll down to sub steps usually i will uh, increase this to 12 and the max collision iterations to 16 just as a starting point because 3 and 4 is really low. Sub steps is how many times per uh, frame the calculation is is done and the collision iterations it, it refers to the uh, the accuracy of the collisions. Okay, so when the when the pants collide with the body for example. Then I'm going to go in my time attributes and I want my simulation to start at, at frame minus 40 because I've given in my cloth enough time to settle so basically the character is going to uh, go back to his starting position this will allow the cloth to sort of settle with the body and by the time I get to frame one this is where I'm at my first pose and then the cloth will now be following the character so I don't want my simulation to start at one I want it to start at minus 40 so I'm going to plug that in <coughs> excuse me and then uh, space scale usually <clears throat> because these by default the my units are centimeters so this is a one by one centimeter uh, square meaning that this guy is only a few centimeters tall so if I start by 
setting this to 0.1, basically what I've done is I've made him 10 times as big. If, uh, the simulation sees him as 10 times as big as, um, as he actually is. So it's going to simulate it like uh, he's, I don't know how many centimeters tall he is, um, but now it's going to be, each, each one of these is going to be 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters instead of one centimeter by one centimeter. So I don't know, about nine or 10 or 15. I don't know what that, that is. I'm not going to count it, but now it's 10 times as big. So he's, he's uh, a lot bigger. Anytime you're dealing with dynamics, the scale is very important because if you want it to look like the right size cloth, you need to know what scale you're working at. So that you, you know, if you're trying to do a big flag or something, it doesn't feel like a, you know, handkerchief. Okay, so now that I've, I've set that, uh, I can get out of my in nucleus node. I'm going to go in my cloth node. So collisions. Collisions. <clears throat> if you open up the collisions uh, tab here, uh, we have our collision flag is is face, which means that it's going to calculate the collisions uh, according to faces. The self collision flag, which is the, the, the collisions uh, with the cloth when it collides with itself, is going to be done at the vertex level. So when the cloth collides with, with something else like the body, it's going to be calculated on at the face level. Um, if you actually want to see a physical representation of that, of that uh, well, of the thickness. So thickness is how thick your cloth is. Um, are you simulating a really thin piece of silk or are you simulating a big, thick, uh, wool blanket this is where you set the thickness so in order to be able to see the thickness you need to turn on you right here on the solver display turn on collision thickness and you'll see you get this sort of yellow um poly sort of geometry here and the yellow is just defined by this color right here so if i turn on my thickness you'll see that that increases and decreases this is going to affect how this cloth bends and folds okay so the thicker it is the less detailed folding you're going to get Okay, so I'm going to reduce it down to like, uh, I don't know, let's go 0.025 or something, or maybe 0.02, so we don't make it too thick, okay, and you can always uh, mess with this later. Uh, then self-collision thickness, and again, because it's happening at the vertex level, uh, you will notice that um, it, it shows it uh, along the, the vertices here, and I'm going to leave this at, uh, well, let's go to 2.75 let's make them a little bit smaller okay bounce you know we don't really want bouncy cloth i'm going to turn this off we don't really want bouncy cloth so i leave that at zero friction we need to have some friction in there i think i'll leave it at point one and then if you want your cloth to be sticky you can also turn up the stickiness i don't think i want that here and then if i come down here to dynamic properties uh the dynamic properties are the actual attributes of the cloth so depending on the type of cloth is you're going to punch in different values here now you know it, it's it's kind of tough to figure out what's what here so what you can do is just use a preset if you click on presets you'll see that you have different things here so <clears throat> the preset preset that i usually just start with as a starting point is the t-shirt preset so i'm just gonna come down here to t-shirt and then go to replace if you don't want to replace the existing settings you can always blend them but i'll just replace it so that it, it completely uh sets it to the t-shirt settings and you get a little bit of a description here of how the, that uh, t-shirt works okay first thing i'll do is i will just up my stretch resistance to to 100 so i don't like my pants to be very stretchy because they they look really fake if they stretch a lot so I will usually turn this up. Bend resistance, I'm going to say maybe 5. Uh, you know, it just determines how much bending the cloth will resist. So if you don't want really bend, really uh, bendy cloth or the foldy cloth, you can turn that up. Um, now, usually this the, that's about as far as I'll go. Okay. Uh, and and you, at any time, you can come back and, and tweak these if needed. The input mesh attract. So we, we skinned this model before, I mean, this, these pants before. So the input mesh attract, basically, if I turn this up and I set the input attract method to lock values one or greater, what that's telling Maya is that you want the pants to follow the skinning and not the cloth. 
Okay, so the input mesh was skinned. So if I t if we tell it to input mesh attract, basically the cloth sim is going to uh, the the pants are going to follow the 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 simu the uh, re the skinning uh, over the uh, cloth sim. Now this is useful for a couple of things. In order to get the pants to stay up at his waist, <clears throat> what we can do is tell it to only follow the skinning up at the waist. And then we'll tell it to also follow the skidding right here at the bottom of the pants so that the pants can stay stuck, uh, tucked in the boots. So, and then the rest of the pants we can have follow 100%. So right now, as it is, if I put this at one, it's just the whole pants are going to follow the skinning and it's gonna, the, the cloth is not going to simulate on the pants. But we can define a, uh, we can like paint where we want it to follow the skinning and then where we want it to follow the the cloth simulation so with input attract at one I'm going to just isolate my pants here control one and and then I'm gonna go into the end cloth menu go to paint vertex properties and go to input attract so let's open that up and as you can see now for some reason when you first open this up and the paint attribute here it puts the wrong thing in here so <clears throat> and this usually just happens the first time you do it so I will always open this up and make sure that I am on input attract. Okay, so we're just painting that value. So right now it's 100% on, which means that if I if my input attract is at one, I am following the skinning 100%. But I don't want to follow the skinning 100% for the whole pants. I just just for the top of the pants and the bottom of the pants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to with my paint operation set to replace. I'm going to set my value to zero. And I'm going to flood it so that it's completely black. So what this means now that is that the input attract has no effect at all because I'm at zero here in the in the uh, in, in pay, even though I turn my setting up to one because this is now painted black. It means it has no effect. So what we can do is then go back to one, come down here to stroke and do a reflection and reflection just means it's going to paint on both sides just to speed us up here. Uh, I'm going to hold down B and left mouse click and drag to the left to shrink my brush down. I'm going to take the solid brush because I don't want to feather anything just yet. So I'm just going to take my solid brush right here. And then with a value of one and a replace paint operation, I'm going to start painting white here. So what I'm telling Maya here is that uh, where it's white, I want it to follow the skinning 100% and not the cloth simulation. And where it's black, I want it to follow the... Uh, the cloth simulation 100% and not the skinning so that <clears throat> that's what we've done there at the waist now we can do the same thing uh, down here at the bottom of the the pants here so that these this part of the pants will stay tucked into the boot otherwise what happens is the pants will eventually jump out of the boots um, and we don't want that so let's just go ahead and paint this like that and sometimes the reflection is not perfect as you can see so if that happens just go in and, and clean that up <coughs> there we go and do the front here okay look around it now because I use the hard brush these are very uh, harsh settings here there's no fall off uh, and the reason I didn't use this this brush here is because it, there's an easier way to do it if I set my paint operation to smooth <clears throat> and then hit the flood button you can see that it feathers that out for me both top and bottom so that it's not such a harsh transition now the problem is when I hit the smooth the values up top here may no longer be at 100% and I need them to be at 100% I want them to feather out as they go down but at the at the very top I want it to be 100% so I'm gonna go back to replace with a value of one and again shrink my brush down and just get those those top two uh, edge loops there and make those and just this way I make sure that they are at 100% and that they will do it so they will stick 100% okay so just go through and make sure you get it all and that way I'm good I think down here because I had a much wider range here I shouldn't have that problem but if you want you can go through and just paint I think these are pretty pretty good right here okay so that is done I'm gonna hit uh, W just to get out of the paint tool and if I now go back hit control one to bring this back 
so let's do a test I'm going to save my file you want to make sure you save your file before you uh, test any simulation because if it does happen to crash on you then you can always uh, just restart it and be right at that same spot okay so I'm gonna hit the play button here just to see what happens and you'll see that my cloth is now simulating um, and it's staying up at his waist but it's obviously not hitting his body so that is the next thing we have to tackle is make it so that his body can actually collide with the cloth you can see that I am getting simulation here but because my cloth is my body is not a collider yet it, the pants are going right through the body so let's reset that and now select his body and what we want to do here is we want to smooth the body just because if you look at the back of his his body here um, there's a lot of because it's sort of low res here it's a lot of angularity and, and sort of sharp as sharp points so and what's happening is you can see them through the pants here so and that so that's going to cause the shape of the cloth to follow that it's not going to look very good so what we can do is just smooth our body and give it a second yeah there we go so now it's now that it's smooth you can see we don't have that stuff coming out of the pants there okay now that we have him smoothed what we can do is go to end cloth and make him a passive collider so create passive collider okay so now that he is set to a passive collider he will actually react to the cloth now the passive collider if we go in, in there it's an end rigid if we go in the attribute editor you'll see that the it also has its own collision thickness so you can actually see the thickness there and these things are not too bad in here um, if it 0 0.1 0 0.014 should be just fine so I'm gonna leave it as is um, and then I don't think I change anything else if you want more friction you can always increase it here on the collider so let's then have a look here and see what happens if we play this back you'll see that now as it simulates the body will stay inside the pants and the pants will actually react to the body okay so we know that that's working the pants are staying up they're staying tucked in the boots um, everything should be fine okay so I'm gonna stop that here so <clears throat> now that we have it set up what we need to do is save out the simulation so we need to cache it so I'm gonna select my pants here and I'm gonna go here to end cache I'm gonna create a new cache I'm gonna go to N object and go in the option box okay so um, you know you can decide where you want to save this I'm just going to put it somewhere I'll make a folder in here called cache and I'm gonna put the simulation in there I'm gonna call this uh, sim because there's gonna be uh, two sets of caches so the first set is gonna be the sim caches so I'm gonna put them in there and hit open and then this is the pants okay uh, the settings here cache format is MCX that's fine file distribution uh, one file per, per frame or one file so one file one file per frame means that it's gonna make one file for every frame of simulation so if you got a hundred and I think I got like 120 plus the minus 40 there um, adds up to a lot of files so I like to just use one file it's gonna put the whole simulation in a single file and to me that works better uh, the time range basically you can do the render settings you can have it just use the time slider range uh, which is what I do or you can define a start and end so that's what I'm gonna do and I do this again pants there we go okay so once you have those settings I'm just gonna zoom out here so I can keep an eye on through the entire uh, simulation here and we I'm gonna hit the create button and once it's done simulating I will be back okay so now that it is done um, we can you can see that we get into position and then he walks and the pants if I just stop it on a frame here you see that the pants have 
simulation and you're gonna get a little bit of inner penetration I mean it is what it is but it's it should be fine now I don't have a lot of detail on my folds and again that's because my resolution on my pants is kind of low so if you want to have a you know more full detail you need to have denser geometry but for the sake of this tutorial and just getting this stuff done pretty quick here I kept it pretty low okay so you'll notice that as he as he goes through his animation the pants stay at the waist they also stay tucked into those boots okay so and that's all cached out so if I go to my nucleus node and turn it off you can see that now the simulation is completely turned off and I still have the pants following along because now it's not reading it's not getting its information from the cloth solver it's getting its information from the cache file uh, one thing I should mention <clears throat> is this I, I, I did forget to make the boots a collider so I went back and I I uh, made those a, I just selected them and made those a passive collider so that the, the pants would actually uh, bump into the boots at the, at the top there okay so that's just one thing that you can also do um, and then I, I, I tweaked a couple settings in the in the cloth but nothing major I just uh, dropped my bend resistance a little bit to try to get a little bit more folding out of that uh, and then I also dropped the thickness a little bit to try to get a little bit more folding out of the simulation so just a couple minor things that I did um, before I ran the simulation so now that these simulation pants are simmed <clears throat> the problem is that these are very low rate these are you know there's no detail on these so the way that I do my clothes is if I want any detail I have these high poly pants here and if I isolate these you can see that these pants have like seams going down the side and in the inside there and there's also like geometry for the uh, sort of belt line here um, and I would never simulate these because they also have thickness to them as you can see there's actually thickness to these pants and I would never simulate that because you don't want to simulate something that's that's really tight and, th and thin like that it just you're not gonna get good results and also because I have geometry that's really tight in here versus like over here you know in the seams so it, it would just take forever and it probably wouldn't simulate properly anyway you'd have a lot of inner penetrations and things like that so for the high poly pants the way that we can get these to follow along with the sim pants is using a wrap deformer so let me unisolate this so the way that a wrap deformer works you can go in the modeling menu set it's under deform and wrap okay so the way we're going to do it i'm going to select my high poly pants first and then my sim pants second just hold down control and click on the sim pants then i'm going to go to deform and actually before i do this I just want to save um, just to make sure that if it does crash because the wrap deformer sometimes will crash your system it, it's it just you know it's just part of it um, so I'm gonna go to deform and do a wrap okay you, you select the high poly first then the, the sim pants second and do a wrap so I'm gonna hide my sim pants uh, because I just want to see the high poly pants now that the wrap is on there you'll see that my high poly pants now are moving with the simulation and you can see that I have my seams and whatnot so it's a, it's a quick easy way to make it look like you simmed the high poly pants even though you did not okay so now they are attached so my uh, my high poly pants are now moving with the animation like I want them to and so these are the pants that would get rendered these are the, the high resolution pants that, that you would then take to the renderer and they'd be textured and then you render them um, so right now they're they're the uh, wrap deformers on here and wrap deformers can be slow so I would not give this to the the lighting department and the rendering department with a wrap deformer on it so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make another cache I'm gonna cache out the high poly pants okay so this time though I'm not going to do an end cache I'm not gonna do a, an end cache here the end cache is good for the simulation pants but these are not simulation pants these are wrap deformed pants so a simple geometry cache is gonna be good enough for these so um, under cache so we have end cache and then we have cache I'm going under cache this time 
geometry cache I'm gonna hit create new cache I'm gonna go in the option box and again I'm just gonna tell it where I want to save this so right in here and again one file uh, and I'm gonna use the time slider again and we're gonna call these uh, pants cache okay and then I'm gonna run this again and make sure you save before you do it again I'm gonna run this again this time for the high poly pants so that they will be cached and again once that is done I will be back okay now that that uh, cache has run through you're not gonna be able to tell a difference it's just gonna look like it did before so what you can do is select your high poly pants here and just delete history so edit delete by type history and when you do that they will disconnect from the sim pants and then we can just reconnect it'll disconnect the original the, the, the connection to the sim pants it will also disconnect the cache you just made so we need to reconnect that cache so go to cache geometry cache go to import cache and then go find that cache file which is right here and as soon as I do that you'll see that my pants now snap and now they move and the wrap deformer is no longer a part of this uh, of this uh, file anymore okay so the pants are as efficient as they're gonna be um, it they're just reading that data from the um, from the cache file okay so at this point we can go in the in the sim pants which are hidden here and we can right here under the end cloth shape node we can turn that off which is going to remove that uh, cloth simulation from those sim pants because we're done with it now okay so the next thing we have to do is the sim shirt so I'm just gonna show this okay uh, now what we want to do is we want to collide the sim shirt with the high poly pants we don't want to collide it with the sim pants because the sim pants don't have some of these details like this belt line here and what have you so we want to collide with the high poly pants to give us a better uh, simulation so what we're gonna do is then take our high poly pants and make those a uh, passive collider so select the high poly pants and go to create passive collider so now they will bump into this shirt here so for the shirt it is a little low res so I'm going to smooth it okay just to add a little bit of geometry to it and then for the shirt I don't think I need to skin it because it's a shirt it's not gonna slide off of him it's just going to stay on the body so I'm gonna leave that without uh, skinning so I don't have to do that input attract stuff that we did before um, end cloth create end cloth and then again we can just zoom in here and select our cloth here go under collisions and turn on the collision thickness under solver display just look at how thick the shirt is um, let's go one one five here and this collision thickness I'll go to self collide with scale I'm gonna to go to 2.5 I'm gonna turn up the friction so what is it at point one I'm gonna go point one five um, just so that the shirt doesn't slide around his body too much now his body is already a collider and I'm gonna go point one five there as well just to help that along as well okay so with this selected again I can turn off my uh, uh, collision thickness there okay and I can uh, save my file again okay and then I believe I had turned off yes I had turned off the nucleus so I need to turn it on otherwise my cloth won't work so let's turn that back on okay so uh, save again right before you sim it's always good to hit the save button so let's just do a quick test to make sure that the cloth is moving and if you see that it's not we gotta figure out why that is so let's see here that's enabled uh, this is enabled and again just making sure that our time starts at minus 40 let's try that again yeah so sometimes when you play it through the first time it won't work uh, so we do have simulation now you'll see that uh, here let me stop it real quick just hit escape a few times now what you're seeing here is the default cloth settings 
and if I go under dynamic properties under my end cloth shape node dynamic properties you see that my stretch resistance is really low so this is why I like to turn it up because otherwise the clothes do stuff like this which is obviously very uh, bad and doesn't look good at all um, so again I'm just gonna go to presets and I'm gonna get that t-shirt preset and replace this and even at that preset it only raises it to 35 and I, I want to set it up to at least a hundred I might even do 150 just to really get it up there the bend resistance I might go let's let's try value of one for that um, you can mess with the mass and stuff but I generally just leave those so let's uh, rewind this and let's play it back again just to see <clears throat> and now you should get you should get hardly any stretching so as you can see um, you get much better results the default uh, values for the cloth are just not good at all so definitely start out with a preset and then you can adjust from there okay so this is working I'm gonna hit escape a few times to stop it there we go now that I know that it's working I can run my simulation so again because this is the sim shirt I'm gonna use an end cloth uh, sorry an end cache to do it because I'm, I'm still simulating this so in cache create new cache go to n object go in the options and again we need to tell it where we want it I'm gonna put it in the sim folder I'm gonna call uh, and then just hit uh, open and then one file time slider and we're gonna call this shirt okay and I'm gonna hit the create button and before I do that again save just to get in the habit of doing that so I'm gonna run this cache and we will continue from there okay so now the shirt has simulated if we run it back and see what we have here it's just the shirt moving with the body we're getting some nice folding in the arms there and it's looking pretty good again if I want to I can turn off my nucleus node just to make sure that all the animation is coming from the cache file and not the, the uh, nucleus node okay so we have now got the sim shirt done and we need to then show the high poly shirt and remember because we because we smoothed the sim shirt I'm gonna have to smooth the high poly shirt as well so I'm just gonna smooth that I'm gonna hide my sim shirt select the high poly shirt shift select the sim shirt and we're gonna go to modeling menu set and go deform and wrap okay just give that a second to finish what it's doing <clears throat> there we go and now the high poly shirt should as you can see the high poly shirt's got the seams it's got the detailing and the cuffs and everything so it is now following along and as you can see here we're colliding with the pants very nicely and that's looking pretty good and if we if we smooth it just hit three and you can see how nice that looks to smooth the pants too you know there's definitely settings that I could have improved in the simulation but for this is this is fine okay so we're getting nice sort of contact between the pants and the shirt there getting really good results here okay so unsmooth that just hit one <clears throat> okay so now we have our uh, high poly shirt hooked up to the sim pants and now we need to cash out the high poly shirt so cash geometry cash create new cash and we're going to save this out so right in this folder and then we want one file and we're going to call this shirt cache and again i'm going to run this and i'll be back when it is done okay so the caching on the high poly shirt is done if i return to position one here <clears throat> and then delete history on the high poly shirt so delete by type history you'll see that now it stays there and then all I have to do is go to cache geometry cache and import that cache 
uh, the shirt cache and as soon as I do that now it's running on the shirt cache alone and it's not running on that wrap deformer okay we want to get rid of the wrap deformer because it is intensive um, it just adds more stuff for the computer to have to calculate so remove it from there after you've made the cache and then just run it with the cache so now the both the pants and the shirt are running on caches okay so that is the shirt and that is the pants so next we need to do that little jacket now my pants are i no longer need to be part of the simulation uh, in fact i'm going to get rid of my end cloth one which is the original end cloth node for the sim uh, pants I'm, I'm done with the pants so i can get rid of that <clears throat> i'm done with the end cloth for the shirt because i'm going to collide with the high poly shirt which is running off a cache and by uh, removing these things it's making sure that they're not getting calculated and thus slowing my system down okay uh, and rigid one I believe refers to the high poly pants so since uh, my jacket is not going to be I want to bring up my jacket here so you can see it since my jacket is a short jacket it's not going to be touching the pants at all I don't need the pants to be uh, a rigid body and then <clears throat> the rigid one is the the body of the character so i'm going to leave that uh rigid two i believe is the is the boots so i don't need the boots uh, let's just make sure select the boots and you see in rigid two there so i don't need that anymore i'm going to save my file here and it might be a good idea to you know to increment your files as you save so i have the rigid for the body I need to, to convert my shirt, my high poly shirt into a rigid as well. So end cloth create passive collider. So now it, it is rigid as well. Now our jacket here, um, because it is open in the front, there's a chance that it just might open up and then start to slide off and try to slide down the arms. So in order to, to hold it in place, what I'm going to do, and this might take some uh, experimentation. What I'm going to do is skin it to one of the joints in the spine here to just hold it right back here in the spine. I just want to hold it to the body. Um, <clears throat> now, I, you know, the jacket could use a little bit more resolution. But at the same time, if I'm, you know, if, if I'm saying that maybe it's a little, it's a, like a leather little uh, vest type jacket, then it would be a thicker material and a thicker material tends to not bend as much so this this little bit of geometry might be fine so i'm going to leave it as is and we'll see what uh see how that looks so i'm going to show my joints again <clears throat> so let's find a joint that we want to skin to um you know maybe this one right here and that is my neck a joint so i'm going to select that shift select my jacket and I'm going to go in my rigging menu set, do a skin, and I'm going to bind that there. So now that is now bound to the body. So as I move it, you'll see that now my jacket is moving along with it. Oh, it's obviously not simulated, so it's just moving. It's just a rigid piece right now. So now that it's skinned, I'm going to go back to my effects menu set, go to end cloth, and do a create end cloth. Okay? So select it let's look at our thickness collision thickness now again being that this is you know like a thick leather jacket i'm going to leave the thickness pretty high here maybe not as high as 0.38 maybe point uh three two or something like that okay so that's going to be pretty thick so let's turn this off self collide with scale is at one that might be a little high let's see here self collision uh self collision uh thickness here and let's go vertex and it's actually not too bad okay so we'll see how that works we can adjust it if we need to okay presets uh this time i'm going to start with something like what do, what do we have here thick leather let's try thick leather and again i'm just going to boost my uh stretch resistance i just don't want any stretching going on in this uh Thing. my bend resistance is 10 that might be a little high let's, let's go down to five okay so we'll see if that works if not we can use a different preset 
So now I can hide my joints. I don't need to see them. Okay, so I can even hide my uh, my pants there just to, so they're not having to run with the simulation. All right, so let me save. And then I'm going to hit the play button. And Oh, actually, before I hit the play button, because this is skinned, I need to come down here to input mesh attract, and I need to turn this up, set no, no locking, or input attract method to lock values of 1 or greater. So what that means is uh, when a value is at 1, or greater than one it's going to lock it and not move it at all it's not going to follow the cloth at all if you have non-locking you might still get a little bit of movement in there so i like to lock it so that it does not go with the cloth at all okay so input attract set to one so again like we did before we need to go in end cloth paint vertex properties go to input attract and again for some reason that uh, goes to collide strength switch it to input attract replace set my value to zero i'm going to flood it to remove all influence set my value back to one and you know i might turn on my reflection here on the stroke and honestly i don't need much here so i might just sort of uh, and then get your solid brush there so something like that and then what we can do is go to smooth and start to flood and then maybe just um, here replace one have that sort of hold and you you know you may have to experiment here maybe go there um, it might end up being too obvious that it's it's being held up at that point so we'll see what happens all right so I'm gonna leave it like that for right now and see what we get and save my file again And then I'm just going to play it back to make sure that, and again, the first time I play it, for whatever reason, that does not go with it. Let's make sure that our nucleus is turned on. Yep, we need to turn that on. So rewind it and play it again. And hopefully, yep, this time it looks like it will go. So I'm going to hit escape. Okay, and I'm just going to gonna look back here yeah you see we have a little bit of that there so what I could actually do is reset this let's go back to input attract we might actually be able to get away with so paint vertex properties input attract and instead of it being a hundred percent there we're just gonna go to smooth and flood it a little bit so it, it has some influence but not a hundred percent so that might just be enough to eliminate that little bit of bump that we get there. So let's go there. Let's save my file again. And then what I'm going to do is let's play it again just to see. And that's looking much better. So hit escape. <clears throat> And yeah, I like what that's doing better. Okay, so let's let's give it a whirl and see what it's going to do. Um, just gonna go back in here and just look over my settings again. Just make sure that I have everything that I want. I think I do. So let's uh, let's run a cache on the jacket. So let's go to end uh, sorry end cache, create a new cache and object. Go in here, click on there. We're in the sim folder and this is jacket or vest or whatever you want to call it actually no we, we we don't do that here we just select the folder here and then we type in uh jacket and one file and so on and so forth so with that selected you got to make sure that the thing you want to cache is selected then you hit the create button so once that's done i'll be back Okay, so this uh, jacket is now simulated, and it is now following along and bouncing off the shirt, as you would expect. Looks pretty good. So again, like we did before, we need to now connect the high-poly jacket to the sim jacket. So I'm going to show the high-poly jacket. I'm going to hide my sim jacket. Select high-poly jacket, shift-select sim jacket. And we're going to go on the modeling menu set. We're going to go to deform. 
And again, before I do this, I'm going to just save real quick because deform the uh, wrap deformer can crash your system. So deform and wrap. And just give it a sec. Oh, and it's done. Okay. So again, if I scrub this now, you'll see that my high poly jacket is simulated. And there we go. So we have all the clothes done at this point. Um, what we need to do is then uh, cash out our high poly jacket. So again, geom we're going to use a geometry cache, not an end cache. And we're not going to use an end cache. We're going to use a regular cache as a geometry cache. I'm going to create a new cache. And uh, let's go up to here and hit open. And one file type slider. We're going to call this jacket cache. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out and run this. And I'll be back. Okay, so the cache has run for the jacket. And again, like we did before, we can go back to the start position. We can delete history on it. And that'll disconnect it from the cache and from the uh, wrap deformer. So then we can just go to cache. We can go to geometry cache, import cache, and we can import, although we don't actually have to do it for the jacket, but we can do it here. Import cache and do the jacket cache. And now everything, at least all the clothes, are now cached out okay so that is it for the clothes so if we go in the clothes here I'm gonna bring back my high poly pants those are now cached out okay so the whole outfit is good to go okay so <clears throat> the next thing I like to do right now we have our um, our rig in here so you know all the controls and everything are in there since the animation is done and it's locked in and it's not going to be changed because any any changes to animation right now means the cloth has to be redone so at this stage in the game you are not changing animation anymore which means if you're not changing the animation anymore we don't really need the rig in the file okay what I'm going to do is get rid of all this dynamic stuff here because I don't need it anymore so we don't need the rig either so what we can do here and I'm just gonna hide my controls again here and I might as well just hide my joints okay so I'm gonna take my body and I'm going to now unsmooth it actually no I'm yeah I'm gonna unsmooth it because I had smoothed it before, so I, I can go into history and unsmooth it. So now it's back to its lower resolution. Okay, so now things are a little snappier. Um, and then I can duplicate it. Hit Shift P to unparent it from my rig. And because it was skin geometry, I can now unlock all my attributes. Okay, uh, and for right now, I'm going to hide that one. And that's the one I'm going to apply the cache for the body to. So in order to get rid of my rig, I need to cache out the animation of the actual body as well, not just the clothes. So for that, I'm using a geometry cache. So uh, cache, geometry cache, and create new cache. And again, we're going to go in that same folder here. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to do one file. I'm going to call this body cache. Okay, and this should be relatively fast. I'm just going to hide all the clothes just to get them out of the way. And we're going to select the body and run the cache. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Let's cancel that. Is there a cache on the body right now? You know what? I'm going to replace it and see what happens. So it's going to run through and cache out the body. And hopefully it won't hang up on me. Sometimes the uh, caching out of things will get hung up on the last frame. And if that happens, you just have to um, force quit Maya. The cache usually is there and intact. You just reconnect it. But for some reason, um, it'll hang up on that last frame like I think it's, it's doing right now. 
So if you try hitting escape a few times and nothing happens, then it's probably just hung up on you. Uh, and in the case, just uh, <clears throat> restart Maya. So what I'm going to do is go do that now. Um, and, oh, wait, no, we're back. So we have <clears throat> we have the cache created for that. What I'm going to do is bring back that body that I made earlier. And I'm going to go to cache geometry cache and import the cache onto that one which is body cache right there so as you can see that that body that I just made is now cached okay so again I'm gonna hide that guy so now we need to do the same for everything else okay so here <clears throat> um, let's do the boots so select the boots. Looks like there's a cache on there. So let's go ahead and just uh, geometry cache. Let's just delete cache on the boots. There shouldn't have been a one on the boots. So we're going to select the boots by themselves. Cache, geometry cache, create new cache. We're going to go in that same folder, hit open, and we're going to go boots cache. Okay. And then again, just going to save and then hit the create and it's going to go through cash out my boots and let's give it that and that one finished no problem <clears throat> so my boots are now cached so what i could actually do is go back to frame to the start frame duplicate my boots shift p to unparent them so they're down here unlock the attributes <clears throat> and i'm just going to take the ones off of these boots and then on this the, the copy of the boots here I'm going to because right now those boots are not going anywhere so what I'm going to do is cache geometry cache import cache and we want the boots and as you see they are now moving with the rest of the body so all you got to do is go back through and do the rest of your character uh, and then you can then cash out the body. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here. I'm just going to run through this really fast and then uh, go ahead and uh, show you the, the results when we're done. Um, OK, so. OK, so now everything has been cashed out. So here's my rig. I want to select the whole group that the rig is in. I'm going to hide it. And then I'm going to show all those pieces that I cached out. So I'll show those. And you'll see that now I have my character's body without any rig driving it. So it's driven entirely by cache files. And if I bring back his clothes, you can see that he everything, every part of him now is running off a of cache. I don't need the rig anymore. So this is what I would then send to uh, lighting and rendering or to texturing or whatever. Um, it's all ready to go. So I can I have a closed group here. I can group this and call it uh, character or whatever. Oh, I already have a group called character. So I'll call it, we'll call him Bob. His name's Bob today, and I could put his clothes in that same group. Now, in the clothes group, I don't need all the sim stuff, so I can delete all the sim pants and, and whatever this is here. Just get rid of that. Leave the high poly in there. So now I can just take this whole group here with Bob in it and export it out and leave the rig behind in this scene here. Just leave this rig behind, uh, and you'll see that I can take the whole Bob group here and just move it off to the side. And you'll see that it's now separate from our rig. Okay, so all I have to do at this point is just export this out to a new file. It's gonna, uh, you know, I I would put it into a new, completely clean, completely empty file, uh, so that the file would not have any all this extra stuff in it. Because the rig, you know, the rig, there's a lot of stuff in the rig. If I open it up all the way, I mean, there's a lot of nodes in here that I don't need anymore. So that's why it's a good idea to get into the habit of doing this so that you don't have to worry about You get a much lighter file too. I mean, everything's going to move a lot faster because the cache files are a lot more efficient than all the deformers and, and constraints and everything that's in the rig. So 
uh, being able to just export that out makes life a lot easier. All right, so that is the workflow that I use for doing uh, cloth in Maya. This is the Maya cloth. Now, you know, in, in this day and age, you probably wouldn't use Maya cloth much. You'd use like Marvelous Designer. But if you don't have access to that, Maya cloth can work. You know, it can be used. It's, it's probably not going to be good for really high, realistic, high resolution stuff. But for some of this more cartoony stuff, you can get it to work and work pretty well. I think it, it turned out pretty well um, with the jacket and everything. So, and having the pants tuck into the, into the boots, uh, I think that worked out pretty well. So, that is the cloth workflow. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one.